Welcome back to Kyle Army, ladies and gents, as we come down into the starter's orders for race number two now for the V8 Supercars and V8 Masters combined. On pole position, it's Mackie Edlam alongside him, one of the fastest lady drivers in the country. Lonica Martins lines up on the front row of a V8 Supercar race for the first time here at Kyle Army. It's the first time she's driven a V8 at Kyle Army, so keep an eye on potential history being made here at uh, Kyle Army, being the first lady driver winner of any race, and it'll be the second time a lady has won in the V8 Supercars. So she's already taken a victory this season in the uh, the V8 class at the, the Big Boss Auto Super Saloons. In that car, the purple uh, the purple machine, and uh, Royal Purple, I should say, is her sponsor. And now looking to take on Mackie Adlam, Larry Wolford, Franco Di Matteo, Benjamin Morganroot. Ben Morganroot is back in the mix. Steve Herps is there as well as the field of V8s make their way around. Ben Morganroot right at the back of the field, so keep an eye on him, making his way to the front as quickly as he can. And, of course, a wily competitor is Morganroot. He'll know what to do to get that car through. They come to take other positions now for the start. It'll be Adler who dictates the pace. The red lights are on. As soon as it goes to green at the bottom, we go racing. And the hammer drops. 140 k's an hour in first gear. They flip it down into second gear. They go over into the kick for the first time. Just behind them, we'll pick up in a few minutes' time the start of the V8 Masters. But it's actually going to be Lonica Martins who looks like she'll get the whole shot. Will she be able to keep out Mackie Adam? She's going to take a wide line and try and drive around the outside of Adam. It's a much tighter corner to take there. And as you come up out of the left hander, you're on the right line for the second one into Yuxke. She slots up into second, runs a little bit wide. Whoa! Martins nearly onto the dirt. Extremely close there. Okay. De Matteo, whatever he's. Uh, heart in his mouth there. She tried to avoid the young lady as she came out of barbecue. He sticks up and tries to go on the inside, trying to find a way through early on in the Black Cat. The Vata Batteries Jaguar sneaking through the second into uh, Sunset Corner. Okay, now as we have a look at the order now, uh, we've got uh, Mackie Adam 1, Lonica Martins number 2, uh, Franco Dematio, Larry Wolford, Benjamin Moore. Well, Wolford up the inside, Larry having a big go there. We've got a big, uh, big battle going on. We've got uh, some back and forth happening. The action is right here, right now, people. So as we see them at the uh, going towards sort of the, the S's and then make their way sort of up the hill back uh, towards the, the mine shaft. Uh, just to let them sort of get through the section here. Uh, I just want to see their sort of time with uh, what these guys are putting in and sort of have a look at the cushion. But uh, it looks like uh, the lead sort of these guys spreading out a little bit. So probably yeah. Look uh, at Morgan Root coming through there as well. Okay, I'm sorry to jump yeah. in. Look at Morgan Root bringing Terry Wolford along for the ride up the inside of Thomas Reeb as they come down the mine shaft through the sweep. Larry Wolford's up to third place now. Benjamin Morgan Route is up into fourth, and Lonica, unfortunately, the biggest loser there of this first lap. She looked like she would get the whole shot, unfortunately, didn't get that. And then, literally, went two, three, four, five, and is sitting in the fifth place right now, just ahead of the hard charging Benjamin Morgan Root, Larry Wolford, and Ben Morgan Root there as well. So, uh, Ben Morgan Root now leading that second group of cars and bringing along Wolford and Thomas Reeve for the ride. It's a Ford Mustang, a Ford Falcon, and a Chevy Lumina in the second battle on track. Look, guys, we must remember as well these these guys also rely a hell of a lot on, uh, on, on, on the drafting as well and uh, with uh, the track temperatures uh, having cooled down a lot uh, in this afternoon but quickly I just want to go uh, to what's on screen now the V8 Masters so in the running we've got uh, Fabio Tafani, Carl Nile, Charles Arton, Brian Evans but in uh, in the order let me try and that's exactly how they said <laughs> spot sitting. on yeah. buddy well done yeah so Carl Nile in second Charlie Arton in third Brian Evans ahead of Denario and uh, let's have a look and see whether or not uh, Ridgeway was able to get back there yes Mark Ridgeway is back Back in the race, he's a long way off the front end of the field, but uh, good to have him back in the hunt. And here he comes on the inside of Denario, nice. trying to make up ground and trying to get back into the fight that he was in with Brian Evans. I spoke to Brian Evans in the break as we got a chance to go downstairs and have a chat to some of the drivers. He said to me, even though we didn't pick it up on screen, the incident with himself and Ridgeway was all Ridgeway's mistake. And here into barbecue again, a very similar maneuver from Denario. Denario trying too hard. The Hawkers automotive car is now bogged down. Yeah. You are not getting that V8 yeah. out of there, buddy. Look at that. Just lit up. And it's going nowhere. Definitely stuck there in the in the sand trap in the in the kitty litter. But um, uh, just another important thing, guys. During this day, we've we've seen so many incidents going in and out of barbecue, and that's just a, just another example of. Uh, just a little bump, which is getting a little bit sideways. Problem we got here. Look at this. Tim Mateo is falling by the wayside. The black cat has been caught and passed by Wolford, Ooh. by Ben Morganroot, and now by Thomas Reeb. So it looks like the Vata Vatris Jaguar has got some issues. The Italian Stallion is falling by the wayside and is losing ground here. That is the Coca-Cola Chevy that's just gone through there. He's trying to follow Ben Morganroot and Larry Wolford to close in on the front three. The front three very evenly matched there. Tim Mateo out of it, which means it's now Wolford, Benjamin Morganroot, and Lonica Martins. Second group. There you can see... Wilford again, fighting out with Ben Morganroot and Thomas 
three as they come through uh, Ingwe corner and complete another lap. Hardly anything in these top six cars, but there's two sets of battles, and unfortunately, safety car has been called, yeah. and it looks like the safety car might be battling a little bit with the lights as well. They're <laughs> just hanging on there. Yeah, we don't so, uh, safety car coming out will just bring everybody back, back together, together again. That's it. Now, one thing I want to just pick, oh, is that Wolford pulling to the, it is, it is. Larry Wolford is out. Larry Wilford pulls to the sideline. He's got a problem there. He broke a side shaft yesterday. Hopefully, it's not the same thing. There's a bit of smoke, but that's just brake smoke coming as they cool down there. Larry Wilford on the sideline there in the Fuchs uh, Ford Falcon. That's not where he wanted to be. Look, guys, we need to remember that as well, the, the, the stresses and pressures put on these cars from uh, the tremendous amount of power that these cars are putting out. Never mind uh, the conditions themselves and, uh, and uh, the track and, 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 and uh, the racing and, and sort of... Uh, these guys trying to get up, uh, put one up on each other as well. So one, uh, one other thing you need to throw in here as well, which you'll know from uh, racing experience yourself, you were in an open cockpit and you were on a motocross bike. Inside a V8 cockpit, you're going to get temperatures close to 75, crazy. 80 degrees Celsius. It's so Because crazy the engine, much. unfortunately, doesn't have like a normal car has, where you've got all the, the yeah. blocking mechanisms and the cooling mechanisms. There is absolutely nothing other than the open windows to yeah. cool those cars down. So I can tell you, that's why these guys try and get out of the cars as quickly as they yeah. can, because they will be cooking inside those cockpits. And Larry Wolford is battling to get out. I think Denardio would like to get going again. But if he's stuck where he is right now, we're going to have to wait for uh, Fire 1 or Fire 2 to get there to remove him from the kitty litter. That is the lead at the moment of the V8, V8 Masters. Masters Tafani, yeah. Nell, Charlie Orton, Brian Evans. And it looks like Marcel Angel's got head of Ridgeway. Angel with a white nose cone on the front end of his black and yellow APV sponsored by Auto House Angel. So that's a good day out uh, for Marcel Angel, as uh, we've mentioned him a lot. And uh, so if we just take a look at the, the timing screens now, I just want to give you guys an indication. Uh, Mackie Adlam running like 147s and then coming back down to the sort of V8 guys. Um, how many seconds? Like two, three seconds behind. I mean, it's a hell of a, a hell of a, uh, I mean, just in racing terms, it's, it's, it's a big one. Three seconds yeah, yeah. is a big one. Yeah, but look at, look at the difference as well. Remember, these cars at the front are running almost 600, 700 horsepower, some of them. The APVs in the background there and the Masters are close to 450. Yeah. So the power output is slightly different, even though they all run V8s. Uh, the, if I'm not mistaken, the APVs are running a 357 option of a V8 block. And then, of course, you've got these monster cars at the front end, which have, of course have been Crazy. Uh, literally running now. They go into, if I'm not mistaken, their 33rd or 34th year of racing, some of these cars. But not those cars particularly, but, uh, of course, the relationship of what was originally the West Bank modified saloons that became the West Bank V8s, that became the West Bank V8 supercars, and then eventually became the V8 supercars that we've got right now. So you've got a, a long-standing relationship. One of the uh, stalwarts of that class, in fact, two of the stalwarts of that class, are still involved. <laughs> Literally from the word go, we had Ben Morganute and Larry Wilford in the front Way end of the in field the in the day yeah. in 1987 yeah. when uh, West Bank took on that sponsorship. There you can see Larry Wilford. Wilford on the side of the track outside of his car having a, a conversation there with one of our marshals. Um, I'm sure he's getting a bit of the inside scoop on what went down, but you can see him just looking a little bit disappointed that the car's <laughs> gone a bit wrong and uh, sitting in the sandbox. Unfortunately, uh, Larry, it's a bad one, buddy. Well designed as well in the APVs. You can see Owen actually put a lot of thought into these cars because they've already got a tow hitch that they can put onto the top of the car and get the car out. Hopefully just doesn't get that nose cone buried mm. in the kitty. No, it gets through nicely. And sure, Donadio yeah. will now be uh, just uh, led off the circuit and uh, asked to park on the sideline. There'll be a little bit of debris there that comes off. As you can see, a little yeah. bit. There's quite a bit <laughs> stones coming out of the back of the car, but it won't affect these big uh, gumball tires that they run at the front end. A lot of these guys on Hoosier rubber. There's still some Goodyear rubber out there as well. And uh, they all get uh, a chance to get and put this rubber to uh, the maximum here today at the Carl Army Motorsport Festival. It's the second running of this one. It's the third round of the Extreme Festival being incorporated into this festival at Carl Army. And I think we've got one more lap under safety car and then we should be good to go. Yeah, that's exactly it, uh, Greg. The red part about this is uh, having the safety car out, uh, putting, uh, just sort of turning down the pace a little bit. Um, it allows the guys to sort of catch up on each other. So you'll see the guys sort of uh, swerving and snaking sort of left to right, uh, trying to warm those tires up uh, after doing a, a lap or two uh, uh, at, a, at a slower speed and uh, sort of, um, you know, they'll, they'll need to warm those tires up a little bit uh, before they get going again. And uh, like uh, Greg mentioned earlier, sitting inside 
inside of those cockpits gets really, really, really hot. Particularly now. Because, because remember, they're not even now doing the pace. Slow. So it's not like uh, overseas, you know, you, you, if you want to compare to anything, something like a NASCAR car, where, I mean, these guys have a sort of controlled induction system that sort of fixates on, onto the, and is incorporated into the helmet system. Not only in the helmet, but have you seen the new stuff? It gets incorporated into their race suits as well. It's Very insane. similar to you see on the MotoGPs with their leathers, with their the system. Yeah. The, the race cars now in uh, both NASCAR and IndyCar have got those systems built into the race suits as well. So it's a cooling system inside the suit. And I think a lot of these guys will be praying for those kind of things right now. Just a heads up as well, ladies and gents, if you're out there on Facebook and if you're in uh, the crowd here, remember we are going live on Facebook via iLEB. And a big welcome to all of our uh, new LEB fans. And uh, we look forward to entertaining you with all sorts of motorsport in the coming year. But we do have a program change. It's just been given to me by the COC. Up next will be the NGN Volkswagen Cup. We then go into the Investchem Formula 1600s and then the Sassel GTC Championship. So a little bit of a change up. Straight after this is NGN Volkswagen Cup, Investchem Formula 1600s and then the Sassel GTC. So a little change up there. If you are waiting for those on Facebook land, make sure that you uh, just make those adjustments slightly. So we're looking possibly at this stage, we've got a half past two. So uh, we we'll probably be getting into the NGN Volkswagen Cup at about three o'clock, which means it'll be about 20 minutes after that into the Formula 1600s and about 45 minutes after that into Sassel GTC, so close to the, the 4 o'clock mark for Sassel GTCs. And Greg, I just want to highlight something. Out in these conditions, uh, even though, I mean, a lot of people out in, uh, in, in the stands and that, they must, under, uh, you know, I also want to just, just put it out there that the fitness of these guys as drivers, um, not just in their training that's off the track. I mean, a lot of the, uh, the people might look at the toppies and say, ah, oh, you know, how do these guys keep it up? It really, really is a hell of a lot of hours spent in the car. But also with the new up-and-coming drivers, the, the young guys, a lot of them are, are training and have schedules away away from their teams and away from uh, the racing off the track. And uh, I'm so glad know. Darren is with us. You know why? She just brought us brutal 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 Yes, please. We love Darren. Uh, another, <laughs> an another point there is that, um, you know, having s been inside a, a race suit for, for a long time and having spent a long time in, in a car. Um, Pace cars in. It's South, Af going. South African people in general and South African drivers and fitness instructors do a hell of a job. No, they do. They certainly do. Mackie Adlam is going to go and have to do a huge job now. He's got five more laps. Make it four more laps because we complete lap four now. It's a four lap sprint race now for the V8 supercars at the front end and you can see Ben Morganute is up for it. Benjamin Morganute, that's Benjamin Morganute, I beg your pardon. That's Junior heading into turn two in second place behind Adlam. Lonica Martins now would have probably just sorted herself out and got her head right because she did make a couple of crucial mistakes in that first part of the race. She's got Wilford on her tail. He'll be looking to use the young lady's pace to close in on Benjamin Morganute, but he'll have to keep an eye on Ben Morganute behind him. So we've literally got a Morganute sandwich with Lonica and Wilford in the middle of it. Mackie Adlam trying to get away like he did in the first heat and has already pulled half a second over the line. So Adlam is going to be the man to catch here. Can they do anything about his pace? And we'll have to wait and see as he goes through Sunset corner and breaks for Clubhouse. Breaking for Clubhouse is Wilford. He sneaks up the inside and gets through on Lonica Martins. The Royal Purple and uh, Max Steel Machine going through there and unfortunately just losing out to Wilford. Benjamin Morganroot leading things out in terms of the second place battle but Ben Morganroot is coming along and looking very, very hungry to get onto that podium again. Didn't quite go the way in the, the first heat so he definitely wants to make up men's and uh, make up a lot of lost ground here in the second heat of racing here for V8 Supercars and Masters. Behind him, not too far off, the Coca-Cola the Chevy of Thomas Reed. So as these guys come down now, the, the mine shaft you'll see these guys are, are clocking uh, what you we're talking uh, way over the sort of 250 k's yeah, an hour. Bottom, down bottom of the mine shaft in a V8 is going to be doing 250, 260 and then of course it's hard on the brakes coming into the bowl and uh, you'll go down probably into first gear here for the bowl as well. I know that going down to the bowl and standing sort of trackside early on the day, these guys are punting it through there and coming into this last turn and punting it out down the main straight as we'll see them now, they're going to come back towards us and cross us again but going back to the battle here on screen we've got uh, we've got number seven there so that's Terry uh, Wolford Terry Wolford and then uh, obviously he's still out in front uh, pulling a little bit of a gap is uh, Mackie Adlam but front end of this, was, end this of is the Masters this is the Masters class yeah so that's uh, sort of the second uh, division of the, the V8s and uh, as you'll see still very very close have races. a look at the little battle there in-house battle between uh, number five car uh, number five I should say is Rene DeLay and uh, Mark Ridgeway very similar livery on those two cars as they come up on the back end and looking for a way through. Can they find it and uh, get through on uh, the hard-charging uh, 
uh, Gary Faree. And you can see just how hard he's having to, wish <laughs> to work there. It's not going to be an easy day in the saddle for him. Faree now under attack from both of those black and yellow machines. It's like a, a, a swarm of hornets coming at him. <laughs> and then you can see Brian Evans just ahead of that little battle. So Evans right now sitting in about fourth place. But it's Fabio Tefani who's at the front end of this battle. But this is what we're concentrating on because it's so close. Yeah. The Kalgar car taking on these two black and yellow machines. And uh, right now you can sort of uh, go with the, the old song. All I can see is black and yellow. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> black and yellow, black and yellow. That's it. And uh, as we said, I mean, it's, these guys are, are really, I mean, they probably between them, it's, 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 uh, they could probably feel the heat in the air um, of the overflow of each car in front of each other, but uh, probably 0.2 of a second or so in between each of them. And uh, just like Greg said, uh, Fabio Tufani in that battle. And uh, Gary Ferrier as well, the number 12 car that, uh, that I, I recognize a couple of seconds back um, as well. So looking at a fantastic end to this race, um, sort of the second, third, uh, coming into the fifth uh, lap, fifth complete lap of this race. Um, and then we see uh, on screen uh, Ben Morgan, who's number seven, uh, Terry Wilford, behind him there. So he'll want to just uh, tuck in, sort of try and get very close to him. Uh, this is probably a section, a very good section to set someone up for. Um, once Mind again, you, you, you'd need to have the speed coming out of the mine shaft, out of those turns, and then uh, into that bend, uh, coming into the main straight. Yeah, burying it into the main straight is what you need, and this is exactly what he did to try and get the slipstream on the car in front of him. Lonica Martins is under attack from Ben Morganroot. Larry, uh, Terry Wolford is attacking Benjamin Morganroot. So it's 16 years of age here in second place. The hands of a very powerful motor car. And it doesn't seem to be phasing him too much because he's uh, really sitting and uh, having a go here. Remember, Terry Wolford at one stage was a championship contender in the old V8 Supercar Championship. So he certainly knows what to do in this car. And he spent a lot of time, particularly in his Ford Falcon, now trying to find a way through on the Mustang just ahead of him. Trying to close down on that Jaguar at the front, but I don't think anybody's going to catch Mackie. No. The third place battle is uh, pretty good, but fourth place is also starting to heat up as Ben Morgan, which starts to close in on, on, on Lonica Martins. Yeah. So you've literally got a two-way battle here for a second, third, and a little bit further back there four and five also just as close and then uh, back down let's just uh, mention the v8 masters guys as well so uh, a name that comes up for me is charles Orton. and uh, have a look at the battle you got in front yeah. of you right now check exactly. it this it's the two black and yellow cars going at it again and free is at the front end of them so uh, can delay and richway do anything about free he's making them go left and right and sideways to try and find a way past but they haven't found one yet yeah so at the top of that class we've got uh five to find you've got Cole now we've got austin in there marcel and as well, uh, Brian Ooh. Evans and Gary Furry. So you'll see as they come out of barbecue, they're always, always a, a, a slippery corner. It looks like throughout the day, the guys just getting it a little bit wrong. Uh, you, we've seen it on many occasions. Tell you, it was the same guy getting it. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly did the exact same, same mistake thing. he did in the first yeah. race there. Well held, Mark Ridgeway. But uh, yeah, just hanging on for dear life, trying to find a way to the front end. Renee Delay starting to do the same thing there in the five car, and the 05 car, of course, uh, hanging in for dear life. I can tell you, it's not going to be an easy days uh, racing here for these three. They have not finished up, that is for sure. Just behind them, of course, is Mike Brooks, and then you've got Jerome Sornickel at the back end of the field. There is Angel, there slightly is different Angel. bonnet on the front end of that car, and of course, Brian Evans, his good friend, and the, the chairman of this category in the Nike Vision car, having a super, super run there, sitting in the top five. Okay, guys, so uh, as we look at it, way out in front now, having made himself a, a lovely, lovely uh, gap before uh, the second and third place uh, try and sort of put the pedal to the middle and uh, catch up there. But uh, as we have on screen, you see uh, Morgan Rood and uh, Wilford come through the barbecue uh, section. Uh, way out in front, we've got Matthew Adlin. He's just running away with it now. Um, I think he's probably doing 20 or 30 k's an hour faster than so oh, far. At that stage, he's got a four and a half second lead, so I think he might yeah. already have the trophy in hand and might be heading That's back it. to Ranfantine. <laughs> That's how close. I, I wonder if he came from the same zip code this morning. Yeah, I'm still exactly, about buddy. Right now, it's Benjamin Morgan, who's also from Ranfantine in second place. Then it's from Bedford View, of course. That's our Terry Wilford. And across the line comes this little battle. This is not done yet. Wow, incredible to see these three cars so evenly matched. And uh, right now, can we see Delay sneak up on the inside? He has a big look. And hard on the brakes is Faree. Faree tries to keep him out. Him He's lost a bit. He's going to have to keep it on the inside, though. If you run wide there, it could, could be costly, and he hasn't. He's been able to make a tick, and this, of course, is the last lap. So into the final stages here for these three cars. This one is going to go right down to the wire, and there's absolutely nothing in it between the two of them. It's, or the three of them, I should Ooh, say, because you've got Ridgeway starting to get a bit sideways yeah. as he looks to close things down and maybe make it uh, two of the black and yellow cars. Anyway, last lap, last corner into Ingwe comes Mackie Adlam. And 
great race here for the five car. Adlib, two wins out of two starts in the V8 supercars and a comfortable almost five and a half second margin no. over second place. Who is going to have second base? It's going to be Benjamin Morganroot, the 16-year-old man, doing an incredible job to beat up Larry, Terry Wolf, a bigger part, and then Lonica Martins and Ben Morganroot. So we've got youngsters, yeah. ladies, we've got some ladies as Mid well. Middle-aged yeah. and slightly elderly statesmen involved in this race too, which is brilliant. <laughs> which is amazing. I mean, it, like I said, I mean, I mentioned this a couple of times during the day, but to have this type of pedigree on this racetrack. Um, and also, I mean, uh, the, the sort of memories that come with, with a racetrack like Kyle Army and, 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 and with these names uh, being involved, I mean, it, it just makes for uh, much more authentic racing and that, that, that brings back that feel, AG. The quench car about to take the victory in the V8 Masters as he comes onto the brakes for the final time into Ingwe. Also with a big, big margin over the rest of the field. Carl Mal didn't have an answer. And in fact, no one had an answer here. Tafani is going to make it two out of two for his absolutely amazing V8 Masters machine. He comes through to beat out Carl Nell to the line for the second time. Nell takes a double second on the day. Charlie Arton comes through for a double third. And then it looks like it's going to be Marcel Angel in a slightly different liveried machine there in the Autohouse Angel APV, beating out Brian Evans in the Nike vision car. Great dice Great there dice. between the yeah. uh, V8 Masters and the V8 Supercars. And I'm just uh, waiting to hear whether we're going to go for some highlights here, but uh, this is what it's all about in V8 Supercars and our V8 Masters. And there you guys will see uh, Mackie Adlin just giving a, giving a little cheers uh, out the window there, and uh, the, even the Marshals getting involved and saying well done, hats off. Because uh, Is that a high, it's like an like Adlin <laughs> shimmy like shuffle? A, it's like an air punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. High five for that. Yeah. Alright, there you go, the Morgan Roots into the S's side by side and of course Ben will be very happy with these youngsters uh, improved drive here in race number two and as the rest of the field come across the line we're just standing by for those highlights to come in right so have a look at the highlights of the v8 supercars and v8 masters from race number number two here at kyle army it's the motorsport festival and it was all about the start well there was a fine time to leave me loose wheel <laughs> or lucille i think it is but uh, yes unfortunately isak speaks right at the start with some issues and didn't even make it back onto the circuit because he had a front left come off heading into barbecue so uh, that was a Fine time to leave me Lucille, loose wheel, whichever way you want to put it, but it definitely didn't go his way. And I'm sure that he'll get to his mechanics sorted out for next time and make sure yeah. that one bolt, it's yeah. just one bolt, yeah. eh? All right, across the line they started, and Mackie Adlam got the drop. He had it down into Crowthorn, but uh, the battle was for second place, and it started to heat up relatively quickly between Larry Wilford, Lonica Martins, and Frank and Mateo. Just behind them was Benjamin Morganut in the mid pack. We had Denario getting out of shape, and he got out of shape properly just in front of Denay. Delay just avoiding him, and Denario in ended up in the kitty litter, which unfortunately brought out a safety car, and the safety car situation had to be uh, remedied. We had to wait for him to be removed from the circuit. While we were under safety car, Larry Wilford pulled onto the sideline and out of the race in the Fuchs Falcon, and unfortunately didn't make it any further than the uh, Crowthorn turn. Uh, Porsche went around for a couple of laps. In fact, we had four laps under safety car, and we had to wait for that car to be removed from the circuit and escorted back into the pit lane. Denario not getting what he wanted. Then the battle continued in the mid-pack of the V8 Masters, and it was all about that man fighting so hard, the five car and on his tail, Ridgeway. Eventually, though, Mackie Adlam did it all right. He came through with a little bit of styling and the man from Ranfantine taking the victory, a double victory on the day here for him at Kyle Omi's Motorsport Festival. Congratulations to Mackie Adlam. We'll be back real soon with a slight change in the program, the Engine Volkswagen Cup up next. Thank you.